Oh. Well, good morning guys, and um, welcome back to the channel. And in this episode, I'm finally doing something which I've been waiting ages to do, which is to make the cupboard doors. These have magically appeared since last videos. Um, I'm going to be doing shaker style doors, mainly as I don't have a table saw and I'm crap at cutting straight lines, so I can just go buy some planks in the right size and do it that way. So it's going to be a wooden frame uh, with an insert panel in the middle. These ones I've already made. Um, the, I haven't got the insert panels yet because I'm going to put some frosted acrylic in, as the inserts on these because I've got all this bounce lighting coming in and the loop lights inside the cupboards. It'd be a nice sort of illumination of the cupboard panel as opposed to it being quite a big dark solid mass next to your head when you're up here. The bottom however, I am going to do classic shaker style panels which are going to be uh, rails and styles and then a wooden insert. I'm going to be using well, this wood over here which is 18mm by 70mm and then I'm going to have a 5mm uh, plywood central panel which should hopefully be reasonably light. Went for the 18mm as I couldn't find 15 uh, but it's deep enough to use sort of normal cupboard uh, door hinges. These ones have got a different solid hinge on and I put some gas struts all nicely to get hold of they work quite well I haven't sorted out handles yet these don't open when you're driving but I'm probably gonna put some sort of padding to stop that happening yeah let me show you the the plans for starters the bottom cupboards are not going Moroccan sands orange they are going I can't remember what the name of that blue is one second right I googled it this color is called Payne's gray um, or I like to think of it as dark blue. So, things which are going to go on down here is we're going to have cupboard door. This one is going to be two cupboard doors and then two drawers. And I've got some drawer sliders there. This one is going to be one big one cupboard door here and then sort of a fixed panel here which will have the heat and dark at the bottom. And this control panel will probably get moved forwards or remade into the new panel I'm putting in. And on this side we've got the water cupboard which will be one small door. This will be two massive doors, so sort of the biggest cupboard of all. And this is sort of like my outdoor storage cupboard so I can chuck rucksacks again one big door for there. And that is the plan. So I need to get making them. First off I've made some framework just for the rails to go on for the some drawers and I'll get those all painted up. So last night in the dark I spent time cutting all of the styles and rails to make the, the doors. So the two longer bits are the styles and then we've got the rails which go at the top and the bottom. And that's going to get clamped together to be the door frame. Uh, on these ones I've also just beveled the edge slightly. You could have a sharp edge, I just think because the wood I've chosen is just soft wood I got from um, B&Q. Uh, any sharp edge over time is probably going to be quite susceptible to chipping. Uh, if I clip it or something, so I think to go with the theme of the ones uh, I've got in the cabinets above and just to make it last visually look a bit longer and look a bit le better in the long term I've um, just beveled the edges with the router so the way I'm going to assemble these is turn them upside down I've just used my pocket hole jig to put pocket holes in and basically just going to clamp, screw and glue together. I'm just going to be really delicate when I do the pocket holes just so I don't split the wood. And then I'm going to route out uh, a rebate all the way along here. And I'm going to put the 5mm, glue the 5mm panel in. So the plan of action, I've got it squared up against the back wall. So Jerry, my plan is to glue them, clamp them together, do the pocket holes, swap it around, do the other side, repeat. So the problem with doing a van build in the winter is it's dark pretty quick. So basically I'm just using are out a bit to just rebate a channel out the back so I can insert sort of the 5mm plate in, the 5mm backing panel in and then I can glue it down. Right, 
one down, many more to go. So when I'm finished, I'm going to have this nice right out channel here and then that 5mm ply can sit nice and flush in it. Right, I'm going to turn you off because it's dark and you can't see much and do all the other doors. So all the channels have been routed out, all the panels cut and sanded. So now, all I need to do is just fill these edges with glue, put the panels in and then weigh them down. Right, well, it's the following morning and these are all dried. I used the old, the band's, band's old laser batteries for a week. Just because I was stacking them together to make them flat, I've, um, I was using greaseproof paper. So they're all dried. Um, time just to get them painted. So I was going to do two coats of all-purpose undercoat in white, and then I'm going to use the blue, which is called Payne's Grey, and then eggshell uh, for the actual paint on the cupboard. It, the blue looks quite good with the the rest of the van. I don't know if you can see, but all the marks from other bits of paint are on the table. The orange I've got, which is my Moroccan sands orange, and then this Payne's Grey blue, and it's got a nice dark light combination. So I'm just going to paint the back sides first, then I'm going to use these spare M10 nuts to sort of turn it over and then prop it down just so the entire back of the panel doesn't stick to the tablecloth. Right, two coats of primer are done on them, now it's time to do the actual colour. Um, as I said earlier, I've gone for this Payne's Grey, which I actually say is blue. I don't know who Payne was or why he can't tell what blue is. Um, I'm just going to get two coats of that. I'm going to do the backs first and then I can turn them over. And that's probably going to take a couple hours between each one. I'm going to need also a quick sand as well just to smooth the edge off again. Right, it's the following day and all of the paint has dried. And I didn't show you most of that because watching 4K footage of watching paint dry is as about as fun as me actually watching paint dry. So I'm going to be mounting all the hinges, well mounting all the doors with the hinges. And I've gone for I've gone for these easy mount hinges. I tried with the standard sort of kitchen ones where you drill the big hole, um, but I was struggling to actually get it to go as I'd want it because I've got a mix of sort of half overlay and full overlay doors and I just wasn't good enough to do it so I'd rather use these ones where it's easier for me to do it and if I cock it up it's a small screw hole opposed to a huge hole I've done into the, the door. It's the same hinges which are on these and I got off on with them quite well and as you can see I can do full overlay ones there so it's just going to be fitting those. However I think what I am going to do is I'm going to build a little jig so I can prop the door up at the correct level uh, otherwise I'm going to struggle getting all of these um, doors to look good because these ones don't have loads of adjustment in them they've got a little bit on the, on the screw holes before you permanently mount them so I'm going to build a little jig and then we'll get to mounting right I've made a little jig because the doors are flush at the bottom of the skirting board I've just mounted with clamped a piece of wood on the underside so that means the door sits flat and then just figuring, I just went online and found uh, a guide to how to mount these in sort of flush and overhanging. And so some of them I need little 9mm spacers, so I've got some 9mm ply, a little bit painted after they've been on now. And yeah, start getting the hinges on. Oh, first hinges are mounted. Um, now let's figure out how to get the door on. So, it's probably an easier way to have done it, but I've basically put this bit of wood on here because I know this is level. Gotta mount that at the bottom, look inside the cupboard, and 
draw on the screw holes really. Hopefully, hope for the best. In there slowly. All the lower cabinet doors are fitted. Uh, I'm probably, although the the hinges do, oh, they are sprung, so they keep them closed. I'm going to put some sort of little latch just to stop that shaking whilst I'm driving, and some little uh, sort of pads to soften that noise. Time to build the drawers next. Um, I'm just going to be reusing some old timber which was from uh, actually the bed slats in my old van just creating box drawers really and put them together so it's a day later from the last bit of fusion I've just been playing around with the shelves shelves and drawers just making sure they get they fit right the type of hinge I'm going for is just a full extension Hinge, which makes it a little bit figuring out because I need to make sure I had the right width inside there and the back bit was the right width so the drawer actually fits in. Generally the door sort of faces I'm going to go for just so it matches the, uh, the style of the rest of the cupboards and because the bit of wood I used here wasn't long enough so I have plenty of this left over. So time to screw and glue this together. So for the draw bases, I'm just going to route a groove out. Not really the best way of doing it, but I haven't got any of the correct bits. <laughs> Alright, through the magic of not filming, watching paint dry, painted drawers. So I fitted the sliders. Really, they've got quite a lot of adjustment screws so they're not too difficult to fit at all. So I'm going to put the, go put the permanent screws in for those and then I'll mount the drawer. So this is probably going to take a bit of adjustment to get in because it's quite a tight fit. I definitely still need to add handles, but drawers are working. This one comes out slightly further because it's a slightly longer rail because there are pipes at the back of this one, so I had to make a little bit of a shorter drawer. This isn't a particularly interesting bit of making the cupboards, but the cupboards all need shelves inside, especially on the two main ones. We've got all the pumps and batteries underneath. So I'm just using some spare timber I've got to make a little frame. Then I'm going to put some 5mm ply, and that's going to be act as the sort of shelf inside. Just going to reuse some old ply from my old van, which has got marks. This was a ceiling piece, it's got loads of different marks on it Christmas trees, footprints. So at least it's getting reused so that I can buy some more ply. So I want to make my life nice and easy doing this. So all I'm going to do is just whack in a bunch of screws. Just to make life really easy, I'm just using a flush trim bit router bit. I didn't want to. I did, I did want to do that, just not just right there. There you go. One shelf. Very quickly cut out.
So shelves built and painted with some nice washable hard wearing paint. Um, these are going to be sort of the base of the cupboards on either side. So they're going to have a fair amount of weight on it and I'm not going to do shelves as such on the inside. I'm probably going to use plastic boxes because it takes up less room and it's more sort of functional but I can just remove a kit crate, kit whatever I want out of that crate and put, the, put it back in. It saves me building more stuff and it's probably lighter overall. But these ones need to be quite sturdy as they're going to have the majority of the weight on them. So, fitting them I'm just going to use some standard little shelf brackets. Not shelf brackets, shelf little pin things. Put a hole in the, the wall, put that in and then just rest the uh, shelf on top. Well, that's got to pretty much sum up this video. And having never made or hung cupboard doors before, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. A few things I've done, I've just put the, the handles on the drawers. Uh, and I did run out of handles, you get some more of those to finish off the other ones. Put some little felt pads on the inside of the cupboard doors to stop them slamming. Glued in the acrylic panels in here. I'm really happy with how those acrylic panels have turned out. It really sort of You've got that bounce lighting inside and on the top, it just sort of makes this area feel a bit lot, little, lot less claustrophobic. Um, just because there's a bit of light coming through. So it'll diminish a bit when you put clothes in it, but I like the overall effect, I'm pretty happy with that. So, but I'll give you a quick tour of what else has happened in the van whilst this video has been made, because lots of other little video bits being worked on. So I'll show you where else the van is, so you can have a little bit of a sneak peek of what's coming up next. So the back doors of the van, I've uh, done my first attempt at doing four-way carpet stretch and I'm really happy for how that's worked. They're also insulated so it's not just a carpet on the metal, it's a uh, carpet and then 5mm, 7mm um, foam insulation behind it and it really makes quite of a, a thermal difference. Same for the pillars, a little bit of finishing off to do there. And the other major change is the insulated sliding bulkhead door. So easy access to the cab for privacy and to stop all the cold air. What's the point of all the insulation you put elsewhere in the in the van to then lose it all by having open huge glass areas? And a few other little finishing touches mounted my Oryx head, which is a notification if the bathroom light's been left on or if one of the side doors is open, it lights up in a, in a, a different coloured white. It's just so you can tell that you've left the lights on. Plus, I like it as well. I've got it working in, in uh, working in Namibia. And that's generally getting there. For those of the questions, where does the bed go? I get them about four or five times a day now. The bed is going to go here, it's going to fold up like that and it's going to drop down, taking up the full width of the, of the van and all the way from the back doors to the behind these seats, which is a quite a huge bed and it's going to fold up. The reason it's not made is I'm using this area as a disposable worktop so I can have the door shut and the heating on. So uh, that's going to finish up this video. So once again, thank you very much for joining me. Any questions, uh, easy to send me them on Instagram. Uh, like, subscribe if you've liked what you've seen. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.